Alrighty there hosses, welcome back and in this video I'm going to show you how to use entries. Now an entry is just an input area if you guys are familiar with HTML. Basically a little section that the user can type something in and then you can get the value of it. So if you're ever making a form or they have to sign up for something then this is going to be perfect. And in this little example I'm just going to make a quick little login form. So let's say we're making some kind of messenger app and the user has to log in with their username and password. So I'll write Messenger 2.0. And not only am I gonna show you how to actually make the elements, but I'll show you guys how to get the value from it. And I'm just gonna print it out on the screen, but you would usually wanna do something like make sure their username exists in the database and log them in, whatever you wanna do. So I'm just gonna hit self, set the border width equal to 10 and if you don't do this, then all the form little input areas are going to be bunched together against the side. It's going to look kind of goofy. So after this self set size request, the default size of the window is just going to be like 200 by 100. We don't need it too big. It's just going to be a little area for the username and password. So, you know, not that much to this program. So what I'm going to do is if I just start throwing everything in here by default, it's going to appear to the side however with most forms all of the form elements appear on top of each other so that's what I want to take care of right now I want to change the layout to a V box so this is equal to GTK box orientation equals GTK orientation vertical and I'll just set spacing equal to, let's do eight. All right, so um, as we stack them vert vertically, there's gonna be eight pixels between each one. If it looks a little too big, then we can tighten it up a little bit, but I don't know, I think it'll look all right. So self add this layout, we're adding it to the main window right there. So give myself a tip bit more room and I'll just do the username area first. So for the username, I'm just gonna make a variable called a username, self username, and I'm gonna set this equal to GTK in entry class. So in entry, remember, this is pretty much the input area. That's what they call it. Now you can go ahead and add default text to it. And what you probably should do if you're making these is you should probably add a label on the left hand side and then the input area on the right I mean that's kind of how every form looks on the internet or you know whenever you're signing up for you know like a username for Skype or something but for this I'm just gonna add a little indicator inside it just to save some time so for username I'm just gonna set text and username now if they already logged in before then what you can do is you can actually fill in their username form so you know whenever you go to like a website and it's like save my username then if they click that then you can pop it in there for them but for now I'm just doing this because I'm lazy all right so we made the input area and now we just need to add it to the layout so add self username true true la la la, zero all right looking good mate and now Actually, I can go ahead and do this if I want. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. Of course, this layout is not complete yet, but you guys can understand what I'm talking about. And so you see when I said that I'm just gonna throw everything in here by default, usually what you would wanna do is you wanna take this, make it a label and put it on the left-hand side and then they can you know, just fill in their name right there. But I'm just gonna stick it all in there because I'm lazy. And another thing I want to show you guys how to do is how to make one with a password. Now with the password fields, they're going to be a little bit different because remember, whenever you have a password field, you have all of those hidden areas. Now I actually just typed the, the asterisk on my keyboard right now, but usually you would want to do it for them. So I'll show you guys how to kind of had, have hidden text. So self password equal to GTK entry and uh, whatever I'll just do it so self 
password set text and I'll just set this equal to password so usually you'd want to just make this blank but I just want to demonstrate that it is indeed you know hidden from other users that may be looking on so anytime you want to make password text it's actually the visibility property so self password set visibility now if it's visible then it just looks like plain text but if you set this to false then it's going to be covered up like those little asterisks so like that so it doesn't mean like invisible it just means like kind of uh, uh secure i guess that would probably be a better word for it so now we just need to add this to the layout still and boom roasted we are good to go now the last thing you probably want to do is just make some kind of sign in button or login button or submit form whatever but i'm just going to name myself button and just set this equal to button and i'm not gonna you know explain this because i already did in like the second tutorial and whatever text you want to appear on your button submit sign in whatever so self button connect and in here we want to connect the clicked signal to whatever function we decide to make so I'll just make a real quick function that prints out the values of whatever the user typed in and we'll just name that sign in so we'll do that in just a second but for now we need to add this to the layout And before we test this layout, let's go ahead and make this sign in function or else it's not gonna know where we're trying to connect it to. So to find sign in, and remember we pass in self, which is pretty much the instance of the class in widget. Now check this out. Anytime you wanna get the value of a field they typed in, so if they typed in Bucky for a username, anytime you wanna get the value of that, then you just write self in the name of the field, which is in this case, username. And then remember from like the second tutorial, there are getters and setters. Now by default, we set the text to username, but they probably changed that to their actual username. So get text. And remember, this doesn't take any parameters because you don't know what it is yet. It's just whatever they typed in so it could be Bucky could be the new Boston could be tuna head 87 whatever so I'm just gonna print out whatever they typed in and I'm also gonna print out their password so again you would usually want to do something like check it in the database but I'm just gonna print it out for simplicity and check this out so we gave a default username and password just because we were lazy but usually the user would type in something like Bucky and their password can be some super secret password. And now whenever they hit sign in, hopefully it should print out right there. So there's my username and there is my password. So again, one last time, the reason that this worked is because we created two fields and we populated them with default text, even though we you know, usually don't wanna do that. And after that, we made a button and we connected the click functionality to this method so whenever they click sign in it called this function so it hopped down to this function and all this did is it said all right i'm going to print out whatever value you typed for your username and also i'm going to print out whatever you typed in for the password so that's the basics of how to make forms and there are some other properties that you can add aside from you know just visible and not but we're going to be going over some more of those as we need them. But for now, thank you guys for watching.